Tonight's program takes us backstage to witness firsthand the creation, start to finish, of a new play mounted on the American stage. Asteroid City does not exist. It is an imaginary drama created expressly for this broadcast. The characters are fictional, the text hypothetical, the events an apocryphal fabrication. But together, they present an authentic account of the inner workings of a modern theatrical production. Our story begins, of course, with an ink ribbon. Conrad Earp, playwright, native of Upper Wyoming, well known for his romantic, poetic tapestries of life west of the Rocky Mountains. There is little amusement to be had, however, in watching a man type. Skip ahead then, past the lonely, agonized months of composing, revising, polishing, editing, rewriting, cutting, pasting, pacing, doodling, and solitary drinking, and join our company as they take the stage for their first read-through rehearsal. Location, the Tarkington Theater, 345 South Northwest Avenue. Curtain rises on a desert bus stop halfway between parched gulch and arid plains. Main scenography includes a 12-stool luncheonette, a one-pump filling station, and a 10-cabin motor court hotel. Upstage left, the Tomahawk Mountains, high speak 11,000 feet. Upstage right, an unfinished highway overpass which vaults up 20 feet then chops off midair behind a permanent roadblock. Center front, an impact crater 100 feet in depth and diameter, encircled by a low Little League variety chain link fence. Offstage, distant, a 650-car freight train, which click-clacks by at five miles an hour. Note to Chief Electrician, the light of the desert sun is neither warm nor cool, but always clean, and above all, unforgiving. Cast, Augie Steenbeck, war photographer, early 40s. His son Woodrow, 14, also known as Brainiac. Midge Campbell, late 30s, film actress. Her daughter, Dinah, 15. June Douglas, school teacher. Ranch hand, Montana, above. Griff Gibson, five-star general. Sandy Borden, Roger Cho, J.J. Kellogg. Clifford, Ricky, Shelley. Stanley Zack, 65, retired. The action of the play takes place in September of 1955. Act one, Friday morning, 7 a.m. Act two, the next day. Act three, one week later. <laughs> 